Now, in this section, we're going to really cover a really, really useful feature. I used to use this all the time in algebra when you're graphing equations, and that is finding what we call the zeros of a function or the zeros of a polynomial is another way to say it. So, you know, when you, when you have a graph here, let's look at our nice little graph, x squared minus 1, and we go over here to the graph button. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in here and go to Z standard. So we'll go to, uh, actually, let's do something even better than that. Let's go to uh, Z fit. So that's uh, zero here. So when we go to zero here, we will see that, uh, actually, let me take it back. Let's go into Z standard like this. That's what I'm looking for. So this graph is plotted here, and you see it cuts below the x-axis, and then it goes back up above the x-axis like this. So you see this graph crosses the x-axis in two places. It crosses right here, and it crosses right here. And if you think about it, when you have a function y is equal to something, in this case it's x squared minus 1, if you're trying to find out what we call the zeros of the function, that is basically when you take the function, in this case x squared minus 1, and you set it equal to 0. And you're taught in algebra how to calculate those values. A lot of times you'll factor and you'll solve for the values of x that make the thing equal to 0. Um, also, you can use the quadratic formula if it's a quadratic function. Uh, and there's lots of other ways to solve for them. But what they basically are doing is telling you the locations where the, um, where the graph y becomes 0. And those, if you think about it, when you look at it, those are the same locations that these things cross the axis here. Because if y is equal to 0, if I'm saying... Um, x squared minus 1 in this case is equal to 0, then that means that y is equal to 0. And of course y is equal to 0 is any points on this graph where, where here's the y values where you're looking at y is equal to 0. So I'm looking along here and I'm seeing that y is equal to 0 right here and I'm seeing that y is equal to 0 right here. So you can calculate the zeros is what we call them of the of the function by, by hand but you can also use the calculator and that's really neat. So in order to illustrate this, this better, let me go and zoom in a little bit. Let's go to zoom box, and let's just go up here, and I'll make a nice little window here. So we'll hit enter to make their box there. And we'll go over here, make sure we include everything. Basically, I want to zoom in on the points where this graph crosses the axis. I'm going to enter and the graph is going to be redrawn. So you can see how the graph cuts below and cuts above. Now you can hit the trace button and you can go over here and you will see where this function crosses the uh, the axis here. But you know you're not going to have an exact value. See it kind of jumps around from 0.967 on up. You could zoom in tighter and tighter and tighter and get a pretty accurate value of where this crossing actually occurs, but that's really cumbersome. There's a built-in function in the calculate menu that does this for you and that's called zero. Calculate the zeros of the function is basically what it what it is telling you or calculate the zeros of the polynomial. So just hit number two to invoke that and you're going to be taken back to your graph. Now it's going to ask you here what is the left bound? Basically when you use this function and also a couple of different other functions in the calculate menu here you need to, to tell the calculator roughly where to start looking. It's not really smart enough to look at the whole function and figure out where all the zeros are by itself. You have to use your eyes and sort of give it a starting point. And then once you give it that starting point, the calculator will use its internal programming and algorithms to go and zero in and kind of uh, you know zoom in on that exact proper solution. So the left bound, all you do is you hit the left button and you're still tracing along the graph, notice. But you need to basically go anywhere on the left hand side of this crossing. It could be anywhere. I could use this point. I can use this point down here. I could get a little bit closer. It doesn't matter. You just have to give it a left bound. So leave it here. Let's hit enter. Okay, now it's asking me for the right bound. So, and this little arrow is telling me move to the right. So let's go to the right. I'm going to cross the zero. I'm going to get on the other side of it. Anywhere on the other side. I could choose this value. It could go up here, or whatever. It doesn't matter. So I hit enter again. And then the next thing it's telling me is, what is my guess? So I've given it a left boundary, I've given it a right boundary, and now it's telling me basically go ahead and move the cursor somewhat close to this crossing. Doesn't have to be exact, obviously you're not going to be exact, just get it kind of close. So I could use this point, I could use this point, I could probably even use this point. So I'm going to leave it here and I'm going to hit enter, and when I do that it calculates the zero exactly, and that's what it's telling you, zero is equal to x is equal to 1, then at that point y would be equal to 0, and that is a 0 of the function. And you can see the tick mark is right there at, at x is equal to 1. It's a really neat feature. So let's go and do it again. Let's go to the calculate menu, calculate the 0 of the function. So we found that one, 
and now it's asking me for the left bound again. So let's go over to the other zero. So basically for, for every zero that you have, you're going to need to do this process. You're going, to need, you're going to need to use your eyes to find out roughly where they are, zoom in a little bit, go and tell the calculator, okay, here's the left bound of this zero. Let me hit enter. Let me go on the other side for the right bound, which is what it's asking me for. I'm going to hit enter. And now it's asking me for a guess. So I'm going to go right on top of or as close as I can sort of see right there and hit enter. And that's going to calculate zero. That's telling me it's done. X is equal to negative one. Y is equal to zero. So it's really neat. Um, let me go and do a, uh, another function. Let's do uh, something that's a little bit more interesting. Let's say X cubed minus two times X squared minus X plus two. So that's a much longer function. X cubed minus two X squared minus X plus two. Let's go hit graph. And obviously we're still zoomed in to where we are. So this is actually a pretty good zoom level here. Let's go to uh, Z standard just so that we could see where we would typically end up if you did this without actually zooming in. You could do this um, zero function right here. It's just that all of your zeros are really tight here in the middle. So it's, it's a good idea for you to go ahead and do Z box and just go ahead and draw yourself a nice little zoom box so that you can see what you're doing. So I'm going to have this as my first point for my box. I'm going to go up and, high, and, and encompass the um, interesting parts of the function where my zeros are located. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to close that box off. I'm going to hit enter and now it redraws the graph and now I can actually see what I'm doing. So that's why I did that. So at this point there's three zeros of this polynomial. The reason there's three zeros is because it's a third order polynomial. You're going to have as many zeros. If this were x to the tenth, you would have ten crossings of the, uh, of the axis there. From, from in most cases anyway. So we go back here and we see that we have three. Uh, now let's go into the calculate menu and we're going to calculate the zero. So we're going to hit number two. It's asking me for the left bound. Well, let's say I'm going to find this one first. I'm already at the left hand side, so I'm going to hit enter. It's now going to ask me for the right hand boundary or the right hand bracket. So I'm, I'm on the other side of it. So I'm going to hit enter and for a guess, let me go to the center here roughly and hit this. So it's telling me, okay, uh, this is at x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0. Now if we go back into the calculate menu and hit number 2 again, then let's do a left boundary here. Let's look at this guy over here. Uh, left boundary, let me go ahead and hit enter. Right boundary, let me go ahead and hit enter over here. And then for my guess, let me go back and roughly put that pointer on top of that crossing and hit this. x is equal to 2. Uh, y is equal to uh, zero. Now don't get too confused. This little line here, this is part of the graph that's continuing down. So this is not 21. This is the graph coming down like that. So that's that's just a little bit a little bit misleading. So basically every crossing that you see here, you can go and, and do a left bound, a right bound, and a guess, and you'll calculate the zero. It's a very, 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 very time-saving function, especially what if you had x to the seven? you would have to solve that and, and figure out all seven crossings. But with the graphing calculator, you can just look in there and put your little crosshairs at the right spot and basically it'll calculate all of that for you. So if you're graphing a function, if you're trying to learn how to graph functions by hand, finding the zero crossings is a great way to do that. You need to mark your zero crossings and then you'll be able to at least have a good starting point on uh, how to graph the function.